Hello, I'm Mike, and I just wanted to talk to you about PyCon. Um, this is not sponsored by the Python Software Foundation at all, but I just wanted to tell you why I'm excited about PyCon and why I really enjoy going there and what you can do if you've never been there before. So first of off, the first time I heard about PyCon was probably back in like 2008 or 2009, and I was like, this sounds like a really good way to learn uh, learn more about Python and up my game and just kind of energize myself about the Python programming language. And so I went and, you know, I wish I'd had a video like this one that would help me understand what I should hit when I go to, to PyCon. So, you know, when you go to PyCon, you might see there's all this stuff that you can go and do. There's events, there's all these summits, and a lot of the summits are things you can't even go to. So you're like, what's the point? Um, you need to you need to research this stuff before PyCon happens, and you need to research it before um, you can even register for PyCon. So you know if you can go to some of these, like the Language Summit, I think it's like invite only, for example. But the Education Summit is just limited space, so you could sign up for that if you're interested in the education sphere. So if you know you're a teacher or an, or an educator or a trainer, you might want to go to the Education Summit, but you have to get in early or you won't be able to make it. Um, some of these, I don't even know what they are. I don't know what a typing summit is. Maybe that's going to talk about typing, like uh, what types are in Python. I don't know. Um, I don't know what some of these other ones are either. But yeah, uh, you can click on them and figure out, you know, are these summits that I want to attend? Can I even attend them? Do I need to be a PSF member? Um, stuff like that. So just, just check those out to see if you can attend them. Um, lightning talks are five-minute talks that anyone can give. Um, there's like a sign up form at PyCon that you sign up for. So if you if you like to talk about your favorite thing in Python or you have an event that you're planning uh, locally at your own local Python user group that you you know you're gonna broadcast or something, you might want to give a lightning talk. You just have to remember that they're five minutes and when your five minutes are up, they will turn your mic off and you'll be uh, told to leave the stage. So make sure that you are good about keeping your time. Uh, short and sweet, and you get to cover your topic uh, well in five minutes. Um, the Pi Ladies Auction is an auction to raise money for the Pi Ladies organization, which is basically an uh, organization to support women in programming with Python. Uh, it's fun. Um, you can go there. You don't have to spend any money, but you do have to buy a ticket to get into the Pi Ladies Auction. So there's a, it's basically a cover charge. You go in there, you can go and watch it, or and you can get a bidding number and bid on stuff if you want to. And there's usually some pretty cool stuff that's worth buying there. But uh, be prepared because it, it can get pretty pricey. Um, developer sprints. Technically, this happens after the main conference days. So mo the conference days are on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, developer sprints are usually like the Monday, Tuesday, and sometimes Wednesday after the conference is over. And it's just a good way to learn how to sprint in Python and work with uh, the Python programming language. And there's usually, you know, like a dozen to two or three dozen open source projects there. So you might work with like Anaconda, or you might work on the Python programming language itself, or Beware, or, you know, whatever. And if you're like working on something yourself, like you have your own open source project, you can pitch it and try to get some other people to help you with it while you're there. So that, that, that could be a lot of fun. I've never actually gotten to go to the sprint. Um, I've just got to do a like mini, mini sprinting like in, on the morning one time, but I've never actually gotten to attend the sprints themselves. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce this one. It's, it's the Spanish PyCon. It's basically a single track of Python talks that are all done in Spanish. So that, that's really cool. I've never attended because I wouldn't understand it anyway. And then open spaces. Open spaces are like one of my favorite parts of PyCon because they're kind of free form. Um, so when you get to when you get to PyCon, you can um, sign up on sign up on each day and say I want to have a talk in like room twelve about um, function functional tool tooling or packaging or you know a GUI framework or something. And you just put that down. That's what your title is. You put your name and your contact information on there, and you tell what room you're going to be in and what day. And sometimes people show up, and sometimes they don't. Most of the time, you'll have at least five people. Sometimes you'll have 30, and you can make new friends there, and you can just talk about you know, your struggles with Python packaging or whatever your topic is, and it's just a lot of fun. Of course, the main draw to PyCon are the talks. 
A lot of people come there just for the talks. The talks are great. Um, some of them are hit or miss because it's obvious, you know, we don't, just, PyCon is run by volunteers. The speakers are volunteers. So sometimes you get really awesome speakers and sometimes you get some not so awesome speakers. None of them are bad per se, but some of them may not be as interesting as others. So, you know, just take a look at, um, look, take a look at the talks, see if there's anything that you like and try attending them. And I recommend trying to attend a few different kinds. Don't just go, you know, if, if you go there for Django only or web frameworks only, uh, don't limit yourself just to those kind of talks. Like try and branch out and see what else is out there because it, you're going to miss out if you don't. On the plus side, the talks are usually recorded. So they will appear on YouTube, sometimes days, sometimes weeks later, and you'll be able to watch them anyway. But being able to go to the talk is also a lot of fun because sometimes you can meet the speaker at the end. Um, posters are basically uh, free for, freeform talks. You can only view them at PyCon itself. And they are, they're basically these giant poster boards with the speaker that's standing there and he'll answer any questions you have about what's on the poster. It's kind of like a science fair in a way. And they're kind of fun. Um, sponsor workshops. I've never actually attended one of these. They're kind of, basically you walk around in the sponsor area uh, where you can get free swag uh, uh, and you can talk to the sponsors and sometimes you can even find a job there because they, they usually have a job fair as well. But uh, they also have these workshops which are done by Microsoft or LinkedIn or Facebook or, you know, whatever. Hoover's there and they'll have their own their own talks that day. If you don't mind spending a little extra money, you could go for tutorials, which actually happen on the Wednesday, Thursday before the actual conference, uh, main conference itself. Um, I've, I've attended tutorials. It was like the first two years I went to PyCon, I attended them. And I've had a couple of really awesome tutorial experiences, and I've had a couple that were kind of meh. They just weren't that great. So, you know, check them out and make sure you uh, read up on who the, who's giving them so that you'll have your best experience and you'll spend your money wisely. Because those are, those are really good and you can learn a lot. But, you know, if, if, the, if the tutorial is too basic, you're not going to get a whole lot out of it other than maybe making some new friends. Okay, anything else in here? I think we covered a lot of this. So there's, there's closed captioning on the talks themselves that will appear on the screen. If so, if you have trouble uh, understanding someone, you can read the captions. Um, the keynote speakers, those can be really interesting. Usually worth at least watching if you ha uh, trying to attend if you can, but watching the video afterward if you cannot. Otherwise, there's usually a couple of other fun things to do. Um, some years they have a, a 5K you can attend. There's usually some after after conference day events like a dinner that you can attend, or sometimes sponsors will throw a dinner that you can get an invite to. So. You know, you can have a lot of fun even when you're not at the actual conference itself. So anyway, I hope this, you found this somewhat helpful and that you have a really good uh, PyCon experience this year.